Hello again. Welcome to Old Guy, Old Camera. I'm Old Guy and no camera today. But we've got light meters. In my first video, I used a camera that uh, did not have a built-in light meter. Something like this, an antique camera where there's no built-in light meter. Well, you either need to have some pretty good understanding of setting exposure based on the kind of film you're using and the conditions, the daylight conditions, or you need to have an accessory handheld light meter. Back in the day when that camera was new, there were handheld light meters uh, with selenium cells. So if you, if you see an old antique light meter and the uh, the sensing portion looks like sort of a glass honeycomb. That's probably a selenium cell type light meter. There's no battery. They just work. Don't ask me how. Google it. <laughs> but they do. And now they, they lose some accuracy over time. The cell gets weaker with time, like any chemical reaction. It'll burn out eventually. Um, but in general, they work. Pick it up, shine it at the light, if the, if the needle moves, you'll notice the uh, there's a needle. There's two needles. And the goal is, well, one of them is light sensitive. And, and when you point it at your light source or what you want to take a picture of, you sort of then line up the other arrow, the other needle, to match it. So when you've got them lined up, you then look at your scale and you choose the, the lens opening and shutter speed combination that you're looking for. Uh, and that's a basic understanding of it. I'll show you some close-ups here a little bit later. You do generally have to set your film speed. So if you're using 200 ASA film, 100 AS, ISO, ASA and ISO are sort of interchangeable. Old guys like me knew film speed as ASA. So if you're using 100 ASA film or 400 ASA, or 800, you would first set your film speed. There's a, there's a, there's always another dial. Set that, and that sort of calibrates the meter to your film. Uh, and then you would shine that meter, or point that meter at your subject. Turn the dial until the two arrows line up, and then choose your combination of aperture and shutter speed. Um, and these are neat. Like I said, no battery to worry about, and they just work. Um, and if they do go bad, they go bad very slowly. So if you know your meter's off just a little, you can compensate for it if you wanted to instead of going out and finding another meter that might be a little more accurate. Now, I've got three. This is another selenium cell. See the glass honeycomb? Similar style. Two needles pointed at your subject to line your needles up. This one here, the bigger one, is a more modern meter, probably made in the 80s. It's electronic. There's no selenium cell. There's just a window. And generally, a button that you have to press. There's a battery in here, a 9-volt battery, pointed at your subject. Press your button. Your, your needle will move on the scale. Turn your dial until the needle points to zero, in this case. Um, the, 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 it's plus minus one, two, three stops. So if you just wanted to overexpose or underexpose, you could turn your dial. And then once you have that lined up, then, then you would again choose your your aperture and shutter speed combination based on what the meter's telling you. Now the interesting thing about this one as I was using it during my first video, it's way off. It is so way off. I don't know why it's way off. Some of these meters are tunable. There's a screw in the back you can turn to adjust it. But um, just shooting at a gray wall, which um, is what meters are sort of calibrated at. Camera meters, handheld accessory meters, their goal is to give you, they're calibrated to give you a proper exposure uh, if you point it at an 18% gray wall, this is probably a little darker than that. But uh, so if you were to, if you were shooting a picture of a white wall, your meter, this meter, camera meter, any meter, 
would be trying to make that gray. It would give you an exposure reading in order to make that medium gray, which if you're taking a picture of a white wall, you wouldn't want to, so you would probably end up uh, overexposing your picture a little bit. Similarly with a black wall, if you were to, a black subject. black wall, black couch, somebody wearing black clothes, you would end up overexposing because your meter would be trying to make that 18% gray. It's all about averaging. Uh, a, a, a picture you're taking is never all white or all black or all gray. It's multiple combinations. So your meter is kind of taking an average based on the light it's seeing reflected back from the scene that you're shooting. It's, it's picking a, an, ap, uh, an aperture and a shutter speed combination that will give you an average exposure to all the different reflected light sources coming back from your subject. Um, so pointing the meter at the gray wall, hitting the button so that it reads, um, I'm getting 5.6 at a 60th of a second. With these old selenium meters, no button to press, but line up the needles, and I'm getting 5.6 at 15, a fifteenth of a second, or even an eighth, depending. I'm kind of in the middle here. This one here is saying 60th of a second. Well, let me see. 5.6 at, yeah, a fifteenth of a second. So both of the selenium meters are saying that I need to expose a whole lot more than this one is. So my first group of pictures from my first video should be horribly underexposed based on this here. <laughs> Halfway through that video I downloaded an app on my phone that was a light meter app which was free um, and it told me different things so uh, I really knew then that my meter was was, was bogus. But um, <clears throat> so the neat thing about antique selenium cell light meters is you can buy them cheap you can probably get them for five bucks, ten bucks. They tend to work. They're really vintage and, and cool. Um, I will say one other thing, I guess we could touch on it real quick. A lot of meters have, see the, the white bubble here? Well, you can slide it over the hole. And with this one, is it this one? No, this one doesn't do it. This one has a panel. Okay, that you can slide over the sensing window. Why would you do that? That's going to screw up your light. Well, we're taking, when we're pointing the meter at a wall, that's a reflective reading. All right, it's light reflecting from our subject, and we're catching it and seeing what it is. There's also a reading that uh, pros use called an incident meter reading. And basically, when you cover up your your window with your with your curtain or your your bubble you're standing where your subject is you're standing where your person is you're taking their picture or you know in front of the scene the, the landscape that you, you want to take and you're holding it and you're pointing it back toward the the sun or the light source or the overcast sky or wherever you're going to be standing with your camera you're pointing the meters back at that. So now you're taking a meter reading of the light that's falling on your subject. And that's different than reflective, so that's what that's what these are for. You don't have to do anything else. You just take your reading with that, and truly, you ought to get the same result, roughly, unless you're taking a picture of a particularly complicated reflective subject. Um, you know, if you were taking a picture of a mirror with the sun shining in it, you wouldn't want to take a reflective reading. You'd want to take an incident reading to get a proper exposure of a highly reflective subject or maybe something that was, uh, you know, black and just absorbing all the light. Um, so incident reading, reflective reading, selenium cell, electronic, they're not always right. <laughs> it, it would be good to be able to verify, use a more modern camera. Use your phone. Sometimes the phones will tell you when, when you take a picture, it'll... Well, no, don't do that. That's a whole different thing. There's a lot of other things going on in phone cameras. 
phone cameras take amazing pictures, but you know, film's sort of the lost art. You know, let's not lose it. Uh, it's fun. It's challenging. It's uh, it's it's a throwback kind of thing to do. It's, it's it's like driving an old car, you know, with no air conditioning and a big loud motor. <laughs> it's just fun to do. So get a meter, get an old camera with no meter, get some film, go out and take some pictures. Thanks for stopping by.